Good morning all, and we're having some unseasonably warm weather today. It's going to be 20 degrees or 19 or something like that, and it's even sunny, and it's the 31st of October, Halloween. Now I think today is uh, strictly a one-off, so let's make the best of it. I've set up uh, the electric bike in a little solar power setup. So what have we got? We've got an 80 watt solar panel that connects to the big car battery through my experimental Arduino based solar charge controller. So that means there's a good healthy 13.6 volts on the battery. Now on the other side I've hooked up an inverter, 300 watt inverter, so that's giving me 240 volts AC. That goes into this unit. Now this unit is the charger unit that came with the bike. Um, and it's designed to charge the 24 volt battery and uh, that plugs in to the battery with that uh, rather interesting plug that has the earth pin turned around by 90 degrees. But there is a bit of a problem here because this charger unit is saying fully charged so the green light is on and uh, it's not charging the battery any further. So if I unplug the charger cable and plug in the bike's motor and speed controller cable and then come around here and switch the key on, on the battery voltage display there are two green lights uh, here, an orange light and then a red light at the bottom which says battery low. Now it's sitting there on the orange light and that's with no throttle. If I turn the throttle control just to put a little bit of load into the battery the bike moves forward a little bit. Just a tiny amount of uh, power to the battery and the red light comes on and I can turn it to full throttle and although the bike's lurching forward a little bit. Very little is happening. So the charger unit thinks that the battery is full, the bike thinks that the battery is empty. So I think uh, my assumption is that the two lead acid 12 volt batteries inside this box have gone well high impedance, high resistance because uh, when they're under charge they're high voltage and uh, when they're under load they're low voltage. So I think I'm going to open this thing up and see if I can uh, see what's going on with a voltmeter. So I've connected my voltmeter across the negative and positive uh, terminals of the battery. There's the lead that links the two uh, batteries together. Now we've got 23.99, so 24 volts exactly. Well, that's not brilliant really for a couple of um, lead acid batteries off load. I mean, I would expect to see about 12 and a half volts each at least. So they are a bit low. They're almost exactly 12 volts each. Let's see what happens when we put the charger in. Well now that's interesting because with this charger unit plugged in and switched on, absolutely nothing has happened. It's still exactly 23.99. So this charger unit must be faulty. Um, I'll check the fuse in the plug. I mean you may be thinking maybe it's because I'm using a modified sine wave inverter, but I have actually tried this uh, connected to house mains and it's still just sat there with the green light on. I do remember this charger unit did have a green light on even when the main side of it wasn't connected. So the charger unit's failed. Let's check that fuse. Now it's beeping so the fuse in the plug, it's a 3 amp fuse, is okay. So the charger unit must have failed. Now I can't see any screws on this, so it's just going to have to be broken open. But before I do that, there may be something else I can try. My new Turnergy AccuCell uh, charger can charge lead acid, so I've set it to PB charge. Now I need, I don't know, let's start with one amp, I don't want to blow this thing up. 12 volts, so let's take that up to 24 volts, so that's 
12p. I'm not sure what they mean by 12p. I thought it should be 12s. It's 12 cells in series. But anyway, 24 volts nominal. Right, so that's hooked up to my big car battery on the input side because this is a basically a 12 volt uh, DC charger. It will then boost that up to 24 volts or a bit more. And so I've connected the output connections across the pos and neg on this 24 volt battery pack. See if it works. Battery check. Yeah, now what does that mean? 24. Well, the voltage is climbing up. 24.6. And indeed, on my DVM, which is also still connected. That's now rising up. I think it's time to uh, increase the current. So I've gone for uh, four amps. Now four amps at about 25 volts is about 100 watts. So that's well within the 150 watt uh, capacity of this charger. And the current is starting to drop. Now let's just press deck. So the end voltage uh, is 29.4. So this charger won't go above 29.4 and it has hit 29.4 volts, uh, 29.1, yeah, the DVM is similar. So this current is now starting to drop. Now, somebody said to me when charging lead acid that it will go into a constant voltage mode and the current will drop, I think they said, to something like a 24th of the nominal so this could drop, well it's certainly going to be uh, a fraction of an amp, isn't it? So I think I'll leave that for a bit and just see how far that goes. Now, I'm not sure whether it's worth bothering to fix this. Um, because, I mean really I don't want a mains powered charger because the whole setup of bike and solar panel well, this is a solar powered setup, so a mains charger is not very practical. So I'm just thinking there's a nice diagram here of positive and negative on this plug. If I cut this cable off, I mean, I might leave six inches just in case I want to go back to this. But if I cut this off, fit a couple of um, banana plugs, then this plug, which fits into the socket on the battery box, could plug with banana plugs directly into the output of the Turnergy and that would be a much better setup. I think I'm going to cut this and fit a couple of banana plugs. In fact I think I'm going to do it now. Now I've just noticed that the fan is alternately running up on this Turnergy now, 3.7 amps and the back of the unit where the MOSFETs are is quite warm now. Helped a little bit by the sun that's shining on it but uh, yeah that's getting quite warm. So I've uh, cut the uh, lead off. Now we've got brown and blue and they correspond with the markings for live and neutral as you would expect. Brown is live, blue is neutral but interestingly on this diagram they've got positive going to neutral which is slightly strange but it does tie up with the connector inside the box uh, L there goes to black and N goes to red so yes positive is on the neutral side so it does feel slightly weird having the positive red uh, cover on the blue wire and the black cover on the brown wire but I've checked it and I've double checked it and that's definitely how it is so let's fit these um, banana plugs so let's stop the turnergy just for the moment this is very warm now that feels good what we got here yeah I mean it's definitely uh, pulling juice out of my big car battery because that's dropped to 12 and a half volts that's creeping back up now of course because we've got lots of sunshine today brilliant so this is a neater arrangement now, we've got the Turnergy connected up to the car battery and then these uh, banana plugs go down the charging lead into the uh, charge input socket on the battery pack 
and that's charging. Now I've reduced the charge current to 2 amps uh, temporarily because these wires look quite small and in fact you can see that we've got 27.5 volts on the Turnergy and on the DVM 27 volts so there's half a volt of uh, voltage drop in this cable and in fact when I looked at the back of this it said that the output is 24 volts 1.8 amps so this charger only ever charged at 2 amps now I will try raising this up in fact, let's do it now stop uh, let's come up to say 3 amps and take a look at the voltage difference right, that'll take a while to uh, ramp the voltage up ramp the current up I mean so at 3 amps 28.6 and this is saying 27.98 so it's only about 0.6 of a volt difference. I might be able to go back up to 4 amps actually. These wires aren't getting warm. That should be alright. So time to uh, reassemble this battery box I think because I can charge it now from the uh, external socket. Now this cable, this charging cable will continue to be used of course even when this battery box goes lithium because this will be the main uh, charging cable uh, to the outside, well to the sort of um, extreme ends of the lithium cells, 25 volts or so, and then there'll be, need to be another connector on this box somewhere, I'm not quite sure where it'll go, for the balanced charging cables, and they'll need to be quite short, and they of course come round to this side of the Turnergy unit. So when I'm charging this box full of lithium cells, it'll certainly be a lot lighter when it's got the lithium cells in it. Uh, it'll be kind of this way around. There'll be a balanced charging port on the box here, and that will go to the uh, balanced charge connectors there. Now, this hasn't been charging for very long, but I'm quite keen to see whether the uh, voltmeter on the bike sees the uh, extra voltage on the battery now. So I think I'll put the battery back in the bike. Let's just stop the uh, Turnergy charging and pull the plug out. And I've still only got the orange light. Actually, those two green lights are partially lit. Uh, only got the orange light on here, but if I turn the throttle... It's uh, driving the motor with a lot more power, and it's not dropping down to the red light. So that seems better. I think it's time to give this battery a full charge now. So let's press and hold. Battery check. And away we go. Okay, so I'm going to leave that on charge. Well, as long as the sun's out, I think. I'll give that, uh, might as well make full use of this sunshine that we've got today. Now, even if these lead acid batteries uh, come back up to a good state of charge. I still don't think they're going to be anything like they were when they were new. And of course this isn't going to stop me carrying on with the conversion to lithium. Uh, what's really holding that up is that the LIFEPO4, the lithium iron phosphate cells, are very expensive. I need to uh, set aside about £150 for the eight cells and the holders and all the connecting pieces. So as soon as I've gathered that together then I will get hold of those cells and start checking them out.